Thank you for the introduction. So uh, I'm Geoffrey, I work at that cloud. Um, and I work, I'm part of the Docker team. So my presentation today will be about introducing Docker, uh, an open source container engine. So just a quick show of hands, who has heard of Docker before? All right, cool. Who uses Docker today? Few early adopters, cool. So um, I'm gonna like introduce Docker, uh, explain why it matters, uh, show a bit the, the things behind it, how it works, etc. cetera, uh, the ecosystem around it, uh, we'll talk about our roadmap, and uh, I'll talk about a bit about Docker PY, which, is, which are the library bindings in Python. So uh, in the six, six months since we launched, uh, we had uh, 6,000 GitHub stars, 5,000 Twitter followers, uh, 150 projects that are built on top of Docker, a thousand of Dockerized apps, uh, 150 active contributors, uh, integration in a lot of open source projects. So why are people excited about it? So if you're developing an application uh, that's available on the web, that's cloud ready, et cetera, uh, your stack may start to look something like this. So you have a static website, you have your background workers, your user DB, your uh, worker queue, your web front end, uh, your API, and that's a lot of stacks, a lot of technologies, and all these have to work together. Not only do they have to work together, you have to make sure they work on every platform that you're using be it your development VM, your staging server, your, the public cloud if you're on Amazon or something, the data center of your customer, and yeah, how do you make sure that works? How do you make sure everything will uh, react the same on every platform that you deploy it on? And how do you make sure uh, your user DB plays nice uh, with the rest of your stack if it has different dependencies. We call that the matrix from hell. Basically, yeah, how do you make sure everything works perfectly on every platform? So how do we solve this problem? Well, back before the 1960s, uh, humanity had the same problem with shipping things. So basically, you have all these products that uh, travel by boat, by plane, by train, by truck, and they are all different, and they have different shapes, they have different interactions together. So for example, if you have spices and coffee in one boat, are you sure that uh, one is not gonna uh, worsen the other? And that's a problem we solved in the, in 1960 with the container. So basically, if you put things in a container that's always a standard size, that's always the same material, and you make sure you isolate things inside a container, then things don't interact between each other. So you can put spices and coffee in uh, the same boat as long as they're contained inside their container. And it also means that as long as you have a standard train that accepts container, as long as you have a standard boat, a standard truck, you can put containers on it. And uh, so everything is standardized. You can ship things, you can transport, store, and this problem is solved, basically. So why don't we uh, use this, this idea and make it work uh, in the development world? So that's what Docker is about. It's putting your applications inside containers and then you only have to worry about how it works inside the container and then the container can be shipped, 
because everything is standardized, it works everywhere and it works the same. We solve the matrix from hell. So okay, so seriously, why should developers care? It's a clean, hygienic uh, way to contain your applications to make sure you have a portable environment that you can put everywhere. So there would be naysayers who, when seeing run anywhere, they will say, well, you only run on Ubuntu. And that's true to a certain point, but let me make this promise, okay? Uh, as soon as 0 0.7, we're gonna support a lot more uh, platforms, starting with Red Hat, Fedora, and uh, CentOS, and a lot of other things, because we're getting rid of uh, AUFS and replacing it with Device Mapper. So, okay. So yeah, so run anywhere? Not exactly true right now. Will be true in a couple weeks. Um, and so, yeah, so you isolate things, you can uh, automate testing, integration, you can uh, facilitate shipping, and um, because you're using containers, you have a very lightweight thing that uh, doesn't take much, uh, sorry, much overhead, uh, contrary to VMs, for example. So, that's why you should care. And why should DevOps care? Because once they have configured Docker on, on a machine, they don't have to care about anything anymore because everything runs inside containers. They don't have environment that conflict or anything. And they can just like download your container and run it. And then uh, Docker takes care of logging, takes care of... Uh, of monitoring the app, et cetera. And so, yeah, and at little cost. So you separate the concerns. The developer only cares about what's inside the container, the environment, and the app that's running in the environment. And the ops guy only cares about what's outside the container, which is Docker and making sure they have logging, remote access, et cetera. So, so yeah, so that's like a quick recap. Um, so it runs everywhere because uh, we're using LXC containers, so it works on any kernel version starting from 2.6. Uh, doesn't care about the host uh, distribution. Uh, you can be on Amazon Cloud, you can be on OpenStack, you can be on a bare metal machine. It works uh, pretty much anywhere. You can run anything that's able to run on the host because, well, the kernel uh, is, we're using, in containers, we're using the kernel of the host. And so basically, at the high level, it's a lightweight VM, so you have your own process space, you have your users, etc., inside the container, your own environment, your own uh, dependencies. And it's also CH root on steroids because you can also run a single application, a single process inside the container, so it's iso completely isolated. And yeah. So, okay, you're gonna say, well, we can do that with VMs already. And yeah, that's true. But really, do you want VMs? It's a lot of overhead and you're basically having to replicate everything for each VM that you spawn. Whereas with containers, you can actually share the OS, you can share uh, the libs that are uh, shared with by the applications, and in the end, you have a much lightweight solution. And Docker makes uh, that even more so because uh, every time you change something in your container, uh, 
Docker, the Docker image only takes the difference, the differential between the old container and the new one. And with the, the union file system, we can, you can basically only care about what's different, uh, apply the layer, and uh, yeah, only the difference is important. So, okay, how does it work? How do you use it? So you have your Docker engine and your host machine here. You're gonna build a container, which we call container A. And so basically, at the end of the build, you get what we call a container image. This container image, then you can push it on the registry, and then it's accessible to every other uh, host or every other Docker that's uh, either in your local area or uh, in the world, depending on uh, the registry. So I'm gonna um, zoom in on two things here. So first off, I wanna zoom in on uh, Docker files. So Docker files is a sequence of imperative commands. So for example, we have run an arbitrary shell command, we can expose a port, we can add an environment variable. All this runs into container and then it produces an image. Um, we can have context that's provided alongside the Docker file. So for example, if you have uh, your application files, you can import them inside the container by using the context. And the same input will produce the same results. So before I uh, read the next line, then why don't we just share Docker files? Because, well, it doesn't really produce always the same result. For example, if you do run apt-get update, you will get a different result depending on if you do it last week or if you do it in two months. So we don't share Docker files, we share the result of that. And Docker files then are useful because they provide you with a source. They uh, indicate to you how it was built. It's interesting to you because you want to trust what you're downloading. And so yeah. The second thing I want to highlight was what we call the registry. So we have one public registry uh, which, uh, which contains community uh, contributed images. So any, anyone can uh, push and pull from the registry, uh, run searches, etc. Um, this piece of code is open source. You can find it on github uh, dot cloud slash docker registry. Um, and that allows you to set up private registries. Uh, why do you want private registries? Well, for testing for your private images to uh, have a faster way of sharing with your local area network, for example, with your colleagues. Uh, and the bonus here is that you can also run Docker registry inside the Docker container. Uh, you just type this command and you've got it, it's running. You have it on your on the local port and yeah. It's extremely useful. Okay, so how do we handle changes and updates? So let's say you uh, do, you make two modifications to your application here, to your container. Um, when you push, you actually only push the differential. Docker takes care of that. You just do Docker push your image and it will recognize the changes, push the differential and then uh, the, the hosts that already have your application only have to pull the differential. So you reduce a lot of overhead compared to, to uh, downloading whole binaries or anything. So it's kind of like Git, I guess. So that's the part where I get to name drop, so it's cool, cool part. Um, so yeah, so we have a collaboration with uh, Red Hat to uh, make uh, make Docker work uh, na natively on uh, Red Hat uh, 6.5 and upwards on Fedora and other members of the family. 
Uh, we have a partnership with CoreOS that's uh, based on Docker. Uh, we'll be in the next release of OpenStack, which I think will be in one month or something. It's called the Havana release. So um, Docker is a hypervisor in inside Nova. So instead of spawning VMs, it will spawn containers. It's pretty cool. Um, we're working with OpenShift, with uh, Solemn. Uh, there are other companies that use D, D is Flynn, Cocaine. Uh, well, uh, we have AMIs on AWS, uh, DigitalOcean as an offer with uh, Docker running on, a, on one of their, uh, sorry, one of the VMs. And uh, well, we're integrated in a lot of other um, open source projects. So yeah, so pretty cool. So roadmap. Uh, so like I said, Docker 0 0.7 uh, compatible with Fedora, uh, much less kernel dependencies. So uh, much less dependencies on uh, whatever distro you use. Uh, so it will make it usable on more machines. Um, device mapper replaces AU AUFS. We also have container linking, which is a feature that will uh, allow orchestration in the long run. Um, then Docker 0 0.8 will make it like more stable and will be the first uh, the first step we, we take in. Uh, integrating the Docker 1.0 release, which will be based on a very small core with a plug pluggable API. So you'll be able to plug in uh, device mapper, jails, LXE, etc. All these things that are like not absolutely necessary, but that we use right now because they're practical. Uh, you can like switch and choose what you want. And so hopefully that will allow us to like be on BSD at some point or maybe Mac OS or Windows, who knows. <laughs> so uh, I don't want to uh, take too much time on this. It's uh, basically like explanation, uh, advanced explanation of how we use things, et cetera. Uh, if you have questions at the end, I'll be happy to answer. Um, so yeah, so Docker PY. Uh, since we're at a uh, Ruby Python convention, I think it's cool that uh, I actually talk about something that's Python related. Uh, so you can just install Docker py, and then uh, I, I'm spawning IPython here. You party Docker, create a client. Uh, I do a call to client.version that just like uh, gives me the current version I'm using. Uh, Make sure uh, it's the do Docker is actually running on the machine, etc. Uh, that's how uh, you create a container. You do client dot create container, and uh, so busybox is the name of the image that I'm using. It's basically a very very small image uh, that contains the, the minimum necessary to run a, a Linux, and uh, I'm using the command sleep twenty. So I can see that the, the return of the function is uh, container ID. So I can do a start on the container, and then I do client.wait, and that's actually blocking until the container has finished executing. And um, sorry, the output is uh, the, the exit code of the, of the container. So let's do it for multiple uh, containers this time. So we created a list with uh, containers that sleep for a certain time. So as you can see, we have we get a list of IDs. Uh, we start them all, and then we get the exit codes. And well, works the same. Then what we can do is, uh, I think the result of container free has been very interesting. So I'm gonna commit it to uh, to a repository that I called Joffrey slash Rupai. And so that gives me an ID, which is actually an image ID. And I can verify that it's actually in my list of images. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm getting the list of images with client.images. 
and I'm searching for uh, Joffrey slash Rupai. And I get the output with some details about the actual image with the full ID, as you can see, the repository, the size, the tag. Then I log in. It's my very cool password. Uh, login works, so then I can push, I actually push my image on the registry. And as you can see, we list the, the containers and it's there. So, okay, so if you want to know more, uh, docker.io is the website. Uh, pretty much everything is there. Uh, the GitHub account is .cloud slash docker, Twitter at docker, uh, et cetera. Uh, my uh, GitHub account is shin dash. Uh, on Twitter, I'm Joffrey with a zero. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So, anyone has any questions? Yes? Um, so, with the introduction of Docker 0 0.8, if I understand you correctly, you're going to be able to deploy Docker instances on BSD, for example? Uh, that's more Docker 1.0. Yes. Um, what sort of difficulties were you guys facing in making it decouple from the system? And in, in a sense, that architecture is it? What does it involve decoupling this thing from the Linux kernel? So uh, when I talk about B eventual BSD support, it's more like, for example, using jails instead of LXC. And uh, we used LXC for the for the zero dot X version because we have experience with that already. Because at Dark Cloud we use that for our pass, and uh, that was like the the most uh, logical thing to do. But uh, when you think about it, containers are not only LXC. We can use other things that are uh, just as useful, and just as good. And Jill is an example of that. Yes, of course, Docker will work the same. It's just uh, we have to like make the plugin to work with jails instead of LXC. Yeah. Yes? So uh, decision of Go. So uh, the first version of Docker, like the, the earliest uh, MVP, was a Python code actually. And then we thought, well, it would be actually cooler if we could have a binary. So how do you make a binary? Well, you see C++. Well, Go is pretty cool actually. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a cool language, I think, and uh, it has a lot of things that we want to use, the, the Go routines, uh, the kind of mix of low-level uh, implementation and then high-level still uh, data, data structures, etc. And uh, yeah, in the end, well, uh, it's, a, it's a cool language and I think it fits the project very well. I personally don't, but maybe they exist, I don't know. Anyone else? Okay, cool.